Okay, welcome back to part two on our lecture of acid-base imbalance. And now we're getting into the really fun part where we actually start interpreting uh, arterial blood gases. So we need to be able to recognize when patients have our uh, acid-base imbalance. And the main way we're gonna do that is by looking at lab values. Now there's certainly signs and symptoms that will tune us into the fact that there may be risks, but we need to be able to interpret the arterial blood gas in order to understand what the acidosis or alkalosis is. When we're considering arterial blood gas interpretation, first you need to know what that test means. So an arterial blood gas is a blood draw that's taken directly from an artery. Now, most of the time, if you go to the doctor and you're getting blood work done, you're taking venous blood. So it's deoxygenated blood that's returning to the heart. Um, but when you're taking an arterial blood gas, you're actually taking arterial blood. And so it's a deeper uh, stick. Sometimes the respiratory therapists complete that, sometimes physicians, sometimes nursing. And the, the ar artery that they're taking it from, typically the radial artery, sometimes the brachial, um, it actually has a pulse. And so they're feeling for that pulse. And when you draw that blood, it'll actually, the blood will be brighter red because it's oxygenated blood. And you'll actually see it pulsating uh, in the blood draw equipment. So it is a different type of blood draw than your typical blood draw would be. And when you get that arterial blood gas uh, lab result, there's a couple things you're going to see on there. You'll see the pH of the blood. You'll see the PaCO2, that's the um, arterial blood carbon dioxide level, the carbon dioxide in the blood. And you're also gonna see the bicarb, the HCO3. And these are definitely numbers you need to memorize. So you need to know that pH normal is 7.35 to 7.45. And you'll need to know these levels for the carbon dioxide and the bicarbonate as well. So here are those levels that you're gonna be able to or need to memorize. The pH, the CO2, and the uh, bicarbonate. And you'll need to understand what those are showing you. So the pH is showing you how acid, acidotic or alkalotic uh, the blood is. The CO2 is going to show you the respiratory involvement from the lungs. And the bicarb is going to show you the metabolic involvement from the kidneys. Here's a chart that'll help you understand this uh, spectrum and all of the different numbers you'll need to know. The first thing you need to know is um, the 7.35 to 7.45 for the pH are the same numbers as the CO2. You just drop the seven point, right? So 7.35 to 7.45 PO, PaCO2 is 35 to 45. But if you flip those numbers, now we can line things up on which part is gonna be more acidotic, which part is gonna be more alkalotic. And 7.40 is that perfect middle for normal, but anything from 7.35 to 7.45 is still within the normal range. Just anything less than 7.4 is slightly acidotic. Anything more is slightly alkalotic. So once you can line these numbers up like this, it's gonna help you understand and interpret the blood gases. So write this out as a chart for yourself before you proceed to the next slide. Now, the best way to interpret blood gases is through the tic-tac-toe method. When you get three in a row, um, it really helps you understand what the, if it's a respiratory, if it's alkalotic, um, if it's metabolic, whatever it is, it just helps you quickly um, interpret the blood gas and understand if there's any compensation. I'm gonna link two videos below that uh, concisely and quickly explain this tic-tac-toe method. So please pause here, don't skip this part, um, and go and start learning how to use the tic-tac-toe method for blood gas interpretation. I'll see you back here when you're done. Okay, so now that you're back and you've learned this tic-tac-toe method, let's go ahead and put it into practice with one uh, example together. And so here is our, we need our tic-tac-toe board and we need our chart that we've memorized in order to be able to interpret this blood gas. So if we look at our pH here on our blood gas sample, our pH is 7.25. So we know that that's less than 7.35, which puts us in an acidosis. So on our tic-tac-toe chart, we're gonna put the pH in the acidosis side. Now let's look at the PaCO2. Um, the carbon dioxide is 47. Now, because we flipped this and we know that anything higher than 45 is gonna be acidotic because it's over on this side of the chart, 
we are going to put our PaCO2 also on the acidosis side. And bingo, we have a tic-tac-toe. We have the acidosis lined up with the pH and the PaCO2. So we know that we have an acidosis. What kind of acidosis? We have a respiratory acidosis because it's the CO2 and so that we know the lungs are involved. But now we need to know if this is compensated, partially compensated or uncompensated. So let's look at the bicarb. Where does the bicarb fall? So the bicarb is 24. And the, we know that the normal for bicarb is 22 to 26. So that puts us in the normal. And so since it's in the normal, we know that we have a respiratory acidosis and the bicarb is not compensated whatsoever. So we know we have an uncompensated respiratory acidosis. We're gonna have more time to practice this in class, but please, please, please memorize this chart, both your tic-tac-toe board and your, uh, your acidosis alkalosis chart with those numbers, because once you have these two pieces of information, you can interpret any blood gas that you need to. So we need to have an understanding of what signs and symptoms are we going to see for a respiratory acidosis, a metabolic acidosis, and so on. Now there's a really nice chart from nurselabs.com that specifically lists out the types of signs and symptoms you'll see. I'm gonna link that uh, link in the description box below if you're watching on Blackboard in the links folder. Um, and so I would encourage you to take a look at that because that'll really help you understand what signs and symptoms you'll be seeing. And if you're kind of a visual person or you like to be able to interact with something, Picmonic has a whole bunch of really nice um, guided learning uh, modules on all of these different types of imbalances, both in an assessment and an intervention. I'll leave those links as well. Um, and Picmonic does have a you know, uh, temporary or short-term uh, free trial, so you'd be able to try these out for yourself. Okay, so at this point, you have an understanding of what acid-base imbalance or balance means. You've memorized those numbers. You're able to interpret the ABG on the tic-tac-toe method, and you've come into an understanding of what signs and symptoms you would see in each type of imbalance. Now we need to talk about what are the collaborative and nursing interventions we do for acid-base balance. So first we prevention. Remember, we wanna prevent these pH imbalances and prevent any uh, metabolic or respiratory systems getting out of whack in the first place. So there are a couple examples of, that can prevent risk factors of conditions and situations that might cause an acid-base imbalance. For example, making sure patients are having healthy eating habits, avoid smoking, um, avoiding poison control, things like keeping um, medications and household cleaners locked up away from kiddos, and then safe food handling. And then in terms of treatment, treatment strategies are always going to be about treating the underlying cause the, the acid, of the acid-base imbalance. So acid-base imbalance itself is not the cause. There's something else that happened that made that acid base imbalance. So is it a respiratory problem? Then we're going to address respiratory support. Is it a metabolic problem? Then we're going to talk about fluid and electrolyte support. And so we're, and oftentimes because of this fluid and electrolyte support, managing fluid and electrolyte disturbances is going to help correct an acid base balance. And as always, things like patient safety, especially if we're talking about um, an altered mental status that's happening as a result of this acid-base balance. Patient comfort. If patients are breathing hard, it's very scary and uncomfortable for the patients. And then certainly patient education. What can they do to participate in creating wellness for themselves and, and restoring, um, reducing risk factors that cause this acid-base balance in the first place? So you'll see a variety of interrelated concepts we've kind of discussed as we've talked through the fluid and electrolyte lecture and now through this, and you can start seeing how all of these different uh, concepts really do interact. Your featured exemplars are those different types of acidosis and types of alkalosis. Um, and I'm gonna leave a link here for this ABG interpretation guide, which is a really nice resource for you as well. Now with these exemplars, your goal from the fundamentals is to be able to recognize signs and symptoms of each, have a basic understanding of why they happen and what we can do about them.
Finally, I'll leave you with this concept map. Again, it just puts this acid base balance concept into a really nice one page, um, easy to understand uh, map. That's it for our acid base lecture. I'll see you next time.